This is a KMC grenade crawl beadlock wheel. But for the purposes of this video, it could be pretty much any beadlock wheel that you can buy today. And installing it on something like a 38 inch NATO Ridge grappler or other large off-road tire is a lot easier than you'd think. And I'm gonna show you how. To get things started, the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is remove these four bolts securing the beadlock ring to the wheel. And for that, I'll be using a 9 16th inch socket and a small impact wrench to help speed things along. With the ring off your wheel and set aside, I can now install one of these. This is a TPMS sensor. And while you can recycle the ones that are on your existing wheels, I always find that it's just as easy to buy a new set and install them. However, I should note that there have been multiple changes over the years as to what TPMS you use, and even on the same model Jeep, and it's really important to get the right ones for yours. When buying a set, it's always helpful to use a vendor that'll do a VIN check as that'll help prevent any mistakes. With that said, we can take the valve stem part of the TPMS and insert it into one of the two holes on the wheel. And then I can thread on my valve stem installation tool and pry it in place. Now, as I just mentioned, this particular beadlock wheel comes with two valve stem holes. And this is a convenience feature that'll help you to air up or air down out on the trail. But not all beadlock wheels have them. Anyway, for this second hole, I'm just gonna be installing a standard valve stem. And as before, all I need to do is insert it into the hole, thread on my valve stem installation tool, and then pry it in place. Time to mount things up. So on a tire like a Nitto Ridge Grappler, there are two sides to it. One with a more stylized and aggressive shoulder lug design, and the other with a traditional and more blocky design to it. On other tires, you'll have white lettering or some other unique feature on one side versus the other and you'll want to keep that in mind when mounting them up as in you'll want to make sure that all the same side is facing out when all is said and done for my purposes i'm going to be installing my tires with the stylized and aggressive side out to get things going i'm going to be using a tire lubricant called rue glide this is something that you can get at Napa or other parts stores, but something like dish soap or Simple Green or even Lemon Pledge will get the job done as well. Just need to pour some into a container and then apply it to the bead on the back side of the tire. tire can now be placed over the wheel and then slipped on just like that. Now before I do anything else I'm going to look on the sidewall to see if there's a yellow dot on it and there is one right there. Now this yellow dot is a mark that manufacturers put on the sidewall to indicate the lightest point on the tire and it's what you wanna line up with the valve stem on your wheel, as that's typically the heaviest point on it. Of course, this KMC wheel has two valve stems. So I'm going to align this dot with the one that has a TPMS, because that should be the heavier of the two. All right, now I'm gonna take a standard five gallon bucket, the kind that you can get at any hardware store, 
place it on the ground. And then I'm gonna take my wheel end tire and place it on top of it. With that done, I can now start seating the bead on the wheel. And as you can see, the weight of the tire alone is practically doing the job for me. But before I do anything else, I'm gonna double check to make sure that my yellow dot is still lined up with the valve stem. And it looks like a slight adjustment could still be made. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to take a couple of screwdrivers to help finish the job. So I should note that you do not want to use any lubricant on this side of the bead. And you're just going to work your way over, getting that bead to suck down into the wheel. Come back on this side as well. here just take your time and work it over it's practically there now and there it goes now I'm gonna grab a dead blow hammer and just ensure that the bead is completely seated in just go around the wheel pound it in. Double check to see that it's all in. All right, time to get the ring installed. And while there's no right or wrong way to really install it, I always like to do it the way they came from the factory. And that's with the KMC logos in line with the valve stems and with the logo on the hubcap. What you do need to make sure of though, is that the holes on the rings and on the wheels are lined up as closely as possible before getting started. All right, with that done, you take the four bolts that we removed earlier and thread them into place, just loosely by hand, opposite each other. And then here, and here. Just to make sure it's all nice and seated, nothing's getting hung up. And then we're going to take, once again, our 9 16th inch socket and small impact wrench like this to help speed things along. I'm going to go zip them down in a crisscross pattern. More bolts set up here. Then we're going to place them opposite again. And then once again in a crisscross pattern, we're going to zip them down. And then we're gonna go through all the bolts in a star pattern. Check to see where we are on the ring. Looks like we're good. Now we're gonna get all the rest of our bolts set up. And we can thread them in. Now I should point out that Cindy and I live in Nevada, a state that doesn't have a whole lot of corrosion or salt or rust issues. But if you live in such a state where salt is an issue, rust is an issue, you're gonna wanna lather up your bolts 
with some of this. This is anti-seize and really just douse it with this stuff. For our purposes, installing beadlocks dry just hasn't been an issue and I've been doing this for almost 30 years. Now I should point out when I say that I'm zipping these bolts down, I'm just really getting them started. We're just wanting to get them sunk in and bring this ring down closer to the wheel and then we'll be finishing everything up with a torque wrench. All right, now time to switch up to a torque wrench. And for this, KMC recommends 32 foot-pounds of torque based on the bolt size. So that's 25, 32. Now we're just gonna go all the way around as many times as necessary to get to that 32 foot-pounds of torque. One time around, it looks like I'm just about there. it now I'm just gonna double check make sure that the ring is sitting flush with the wheel down in here looks good I think we're good all right take the tire off the stuff. now it's time to air it up For safety reasons, it's always a good idea to stand to the side of your tire, especially after installing a brand new set of bead locks. In fact, that's why I always like using a long air pose. That took a while. And that's all there is to it. And yes, it really is that easy. Trust me, this is something you can totally do. Now, four more to go.
Good girl. <laughs>